Can you recall the unique ensemble in a well-loved television series from the 80s, Golden Girls? Crafted by Susan Harris, this iconic sitcom garnered praise from critics and earned numerous esteemed accolades, notably the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Comedy Series. Three decades have passed since its concluding episode, yet the mysteries shrouding Golden Girls production remain largely unknown to its audience. Naturally, there exist numerous captivating revelations about the Golden Girls that await exploration in this video, so let's get started. Rue McClanahan maintained her wardrobe. Rue McClanahan, the talented actress behind the unforgettable character Blanche Devereaux on The Golden Girls, not only left a lasting legacy on screen, but also made a unique and thoughtful provision in her contract that would extend her connection with her character beyond the show's run. In a move that reflected her fondness for Blanche's distinct sense of style, McClanahan negotiated a clause in her contract that granted her ownership of all the custom-made clothing worn by her character. Over the years, McClanahan went beyond merely preserving her character's wardrobe. She actively collected an array of props, souvenirs, and artifacts from her time on The Golden Girls. Her intention was clear. She wanted to share these cherished mementos with her loyal fans, allowing them a glimpse into the world of Blanche Devereaux. It was a gesture that spoke to her appreciation for the show's fan base and the impact that the Golden Girls had on popular culture. Tragically, Rue McClanahan passed away in 2010, leaving behind a legacy that extended beyond her on-screen accomplishments. In a touching fulfillment of her wishes, Mark LaRue, a close friend of McClanahan's, took up the mantle to honor her memory. He launched a website dedicated to the late actress, providing a platform for her friends and family to select personal items for themselves. In a heartwarming move, the remaining memorabilia, including the iconic clothing and other artifacts, was made available for sale to the public. What made this endeavor even more special was McClanahan's philanthropic spirit. The proceeds generated from the sale of her memorabilia were not destined for personal gain. Instead, they were earmarked for specific charities that held a special place in her heart. In this way, even after her passing, Rue McClanahan continued to make a positive impact, using her possessions to contribute to causes she deeply cared about. Elaine Stritch was in contention for the part of Dorothy. The casting process for The Golden Girls involved some interesting twists, and one notable instance was Elaine Stritch's audition for the role of Dorothy. Bay Arthur eventually secured the iconic part, but Stritch's recollections offer a fascinating glimpse into the dynamics of the audition process and the challenges she faced. In her stage show, Elaine Stritch candidly shared her disappointment at not landing the role of Dorothy. She revealed that she felt a disconnect with the writer right from the start, expressing the belief that the writer didn't warm up to her during the audition. Stritch's attempt to win the writer over proved unsuccessful, and she attributed it to a clash in sensibilities. According to Stritch, the writer, whose identity remains unspecified, didn't appreciate her sense of humor and found fault with her colorful language. This candid revelation sheds light on the intricate and sometimes subjective nature of casting decisions. Stritch's comedic style and use of vibrant language, characteristics that defined her on and off the stage, might have clashed with the specific vision the writer had for the character of Dorothy. The dining table featured only three chairs. The iconic image of the four golden girls gathered around the kitchen table, engaged in witty banter, and sharing cheesecake is etched into the memories of fans worldwide. However, keen-eyed viewers might have noticed a peculiar detail. There were only three chairs around the table. Why the discrepancy? Director Terry Hughes sheds light on this seemingly odd setup. As it turns out, the absence of a fourth chair wasn't a mere oversight. It was a deliberate choice driven by technical considerations. Hughes explains, There was a technical reason for that, because somebody would have had to sit with their back to the camera. 
In the world of television production, camera angles and shot compositions are crucial, and arranging the characters to face the camera optimally takes precedence. To maintain visual consistency and ensure that the audience could see all the characters clearly, the decision was made to leave one side of the table without a chair. This way, no actor had to sit with their back to the camera, allowing for a more dynamic and engaging presentation of the scenes. It's a testament to the meticulous planning and attention to detail that went into creating the show's visual aesthetics. As for the seating arrangement, Hughes likens it to the dynamics of a school bus. Once a character claimed a seat, it became their designated spot for the duration of the series. In the case of the Golden Girls, Dorothy, portrayed by B. Arthur, was always positioned in the middle. The remaining duo, Rose and Blanche, played by Betty White and Rue McClanahan, would switch sides based on the practicality of exiting the room quickly adding a touch of practicality to the on-screen dynamics. And then there's the irrepressible Sophia, portrayed by Estelle Getty, who often eschewed the traditional chairs altogether. Instead, she would pull up a stool, emphasizing her character's unique and spirited approach to life. This choice not only added a humorous element to the scenes, but also allowed Sophia to assert her independence and quirkiness. Betty White was initially chosen for the role of Blanche. Betty White's journey into the iconic role of Rose Nyland in The Golden Girls was a fascinating one, marked by a careful consideration of her previous characters and a strategic decision to redefine her on-screen persona. Before gracing the screen as Rose, Betty White had left an indelible mark on television with her role as Sue Ann Nivens on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Sue Ann was characterized as the neighborhood nymphomaniac, a role that showcased White's comedic talent and ability to bring memorable characters to life. When the opportunity to join the cast of The Golden Girls arose, the producers faced a unique challenge. They recognized that White's portrayal of another man-hungry character might lead audiences to perceive Rose as a mere extension of Sue Ann Nivens. To avoid any potential confusion and to allow Betty White to showcase her versatility, a decision was made to undergo a drastic transformation for her character. In a surprising twist, the man-hungry persona was discarded, and Rose Nylund emerged as a character with a different charm altogether. Rose was characterized by her sweet and somewhat naive nature, creating a lovable, endearing figure in contrast to the more assertive and overtly sexual Sue Ann. This strategic change not only allowed Betty White to showcase her acting range, but also ensured that audiences would see Rose as a distinct and fresh character, unencumbered by any preconceived notions from her previous role. Despite the significant departure from her previous character, Betty White embraced the opportunity to bring Rose Nyland to life. Her enthusiasm for the role was palpable, and she poured her energy into crafting a character that would become an integral part of television history. The decision to cast Betty White as Rose not only demonstrated the wisdom of the show's producers, but also underscored White's ability to adapt and excel in diverse roles solidifying her status as a beloved and versatile actress. The actresses diverged significantly from their on-screen personas, Rue McClanahan, providing a behind-the-scenes perspective on The Golden Girls, dispelled any notion that the cast members closely resembled their on-screen characters. In a candid revelation, she emphasized the stark contrasts between the actors and their Golden Girl personas, Despite their convincing portrayals, the real lives of the cast members were quite different from the fictional lives they depicted. McClanahan, known for her portrayal of the man-crazy and glamorous Blanche Devereaux, humorously rejected any comparison between herself and her character. She playfully remarked, People ask me if I am like Blanche, and my standard answer is, Get serious. Look at the facts. Blanche is a man crazy, glamorous, extremely sexy, successful with men Southern Belle from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm not from Atlanta.
This statement underscored the clear distinction between her real identity and the character she brought to life on screen. Contrary to the assumption that the cast might share similarities with their characters, McClanahan offered insights into the individual traits of her co-stars. She highlighted Betty White as the one who differed the most from her character, Rose Nyland. McClanahan humorously remarked, Betty probably the least of all. I would say Estelle Getty was more like Sophia, although she wasn't at all pushy or vitriolic. This acknowledgement hinted at the uniqueness of each actor and their ability to embody characters that were distinct from their own personalities. Estelle Getty, who portrayed the quick-witted Sophia Petrillo, brought her own brand of humor to the character. McClanahan noted Getty's suggestion to make the characters Jewish, a reflection of Getty's own background. Despite the differences, Getty's comedic sensibilities and New York flair contributed to the memorable portrayal of Sophia on the show. B. Arthur, who played Dorothy's Bornack, was described by McClanahan as the straightest character, the least eccentric. However, she highlighted the differences in the life trajectories of the actor and character, emphasizing that Dorothy's failures were vastly different from B. Arthur's real-life success. McClanahan also praised Arthur's sharp wit and unique perspective on people. As for Betty White, McClanahan playfully quipped, And Betty White has nothing but brains. She's almost as smart as I am. This humorous remark showcased the camaraderie and good-natured banter among the cast members. Blanche and Dorothy did not lead golden lives off-screen. Rue McClanahan, in a candid revelation, offered a glimpse into the dynamics behind the scenes of The Golden Girls, shedding light on her relationship with co-star B. Arthur, who portrayed the no-nonsense and often sarcastic Dorothy's Bornack. Despite the apparent on-screen chemistry between their characters, McClanahan admitted that off-screen, she and Arthur did not share the warmest of friendships. In her own words, McClanahan acknowledged, B, Arthur and I didn't have a lot of relationship going on. This straightforward admission hinted at a disconnect that existed outside the scripted world of the Golden Girls' Miami home. McClanahan went on to describe Arthur as a very, very eccentric woman, providing insight into Arthur's personality, which seemed to differ significantly from the free-spirited and vivacious characters they both portrayed on the show. One intriguing aspect of McClanahan's revelations was the glimpse into Arthur's idiosyncrasies. According to McClanahan, Arthur had certain routines and preferences that added a layer of complexity to their interactions. For instance, Arthur wouldn't go to lunch with McClanahan unless their co-star Betty White accompanied them. This detail painted a picture of Arthur as someone who was particular about maintaining established dynamics and perhaps found comfort in familiarity. Despite the apparent differences and the challenges in their off-screen relationship, the magic of television worked its wonders. On screen, the chemistry between Blanche and Dorothy was nothing short of electric. Their banter, comedic timing, and the palpable tension between their characters were integral to the show's success. This incongruity between the real-life dynamics and the on-screen portrayal showcased the professionalism of both actresses, who managed to set aside personal differences to deliver performances that captivated audiences. The reality behind the cheesecake scenes. The Golden Girls left an indelible mark not only on the world of television, but also on the culinary landscape, particularly when it comes to cheesecake. The iconic scenes of the ladies gathering in the kitchen over several slices of cheesecake became a fan-favorite ritual, shaping the way viewers perceive and enjoy this delectable dessert. The camaraderie and laughter shared by the Golden Girls over cheesecake contributed to the charm of these kitchen scenes. However, behind the scenes, there were intriguing dynamics related to the cast members' personal preferences. Betty White, known for her role as Rose Nyland, added a quirky twist to the narrative. Despite enjoying cheesecake in her personal life, White had a unique rule when it came to eating on camera. She refrained from consuming any food during scenes, a choice that may come as a surprise to fans who delighted in watching the characters savor each bite.
This decision perhaps added a layer of mystery and intrigue to Rose's interactions with the beloved dessert. On the other end of the spectrum was Rue McClanahan, who portrayed the vivacious Blanche Devereaux. While rumors circulated that McClanahan indulged in the cheesecake delights with gusto, she debunked this notion, asserting that she only pretended to eat the dessert during scenes. The revelation adds an amusing element to the scenes, highlighting the artistry involved in creating the illusion of enjoyment. The most surprising revelation, however, was B. Arthur's aversion to cheesecake. Despite the central role the dessert played in the show, Arthur, who played the straight-talking Dorothy's Bornack, disliked both cheesecake and the scenes involving it. This behind-the-scenes tidbit adds an ironic twist to the iconic moments shared around the kitchen table, demonstrating the actress's ability to convincingly portray characters even when the on-screen delicacies didn't align with their personal tastes. They received a considerable amount of fan mail from adolescent girls. Rue McClanahan, reflecting on the profound impact of The Golden Girls, unveiled a poignant aspect of the show's influence, the heartfelt connection it forged with teenage viewers. In an interview from the archive of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, McClanahan revealed that the cast received numerous letters from teenage girls expressing a deep desire to escape their challenging home situations and move in with the Golden Girls. The surprising revelation underscored the show's powerful resonance and the blurred lines between fiction and reality for its dedicated audience. According to McClanahan, these young viewers perceived the lives of the four characters, Blanche, Dorothy, Rose, and Sophia, as a reflection of real-life relationships. The warmth and friendship exhibited by the characters coupled with their unwavering support for one another through thick and thin, became a source of solace for teenagers navigating their own tumultuous home environments. The appeal wasn't just in the humor and camaraderie, but in the sense of stability and unconditional friendship that the Golden Girls provided. The characters, portrayed by a stellar ensemble cast, appeared to these teenagers as surrogate grandmothers, offering the kind of unconditional love and understanding that they might have yearned for in their own lives. The universality of the themes explored on the show, friendship, love, and resilience in the face of life's challenges, resonated deeply with viewers of all ages, transcending generational boundaries. The fact that teenage girls wrote letters expressing a desire to join the Golden Girls in their fictional home, speaks volumes about the show's ability to create a relatable and aspirational universe. McClanahan's revelation sheds light on the profound impact television can have on viewers' lives, providing not just entertainment, but a sense of comfort, belonging, and inspiration. A notable lineup of guest stars. The Golden Girls was not only a beloved sitcom, but also a platform that showcased an impressive array of guest stars, contributing to the show's enduring popularity and cultural impact. The inclusion of notable guest appearances became a hallmark of the series, providing a mix of seasoned veterans and up-and-coming talents. The list of guest stars reads like a who's who of the entertainment industry, underlining the show's broad appeal. A young George Clooney, before becoming a Hollywood A-lister, made an appearance, as did Jeffrey Tambor, Mario Lopez, and Quentin Tarantino. The presence of these budding stars on The Golden Girls served as a career booster, exposing them to a wide audience and offering a stepping stone to future successes. In addition to emerging talents, the show attracted legendary figures, further elevating its status. Icons like Mickey Rooney, Dick Van Dyke, Debbie Reynolds, Jerry Orbach, Fred Willard, and Burt Reynolds lent their talents to various episodes. The inclusion of such seasoned pros not only added depth to the show, but also highlighted its broad appeal across generations. For young actors at the time, securing a guest spot on The Golden Girls was considered a coveted opportunity, the show's popularity meant exposure to a vast and dedicated audience, providing a valuable boost to their careers. 
At the same time, the presence of established actors in guest roles added an extra layer of excitement for viewers, enhancing the overall viewing experience. The willingness of high-profile stars to appear on The Golden Girls spoke volumes about the show's reputation and the creative environment it offered. The series managed to strike a balance between its core cast's chemistry and the infusion of fresh energy from guest stars, creating a winning formula that resonated with audiences and industry professionals alike. Estelle Getty Experienced Stage Fright Estelle Getty, the actress behind the beloved character Sophia Petrillo on The Golden Girls, brought a unique and endearing energy to the show. What many fans may not have realized is that Getty, despite her seasoned career, grappled with stage fright throughout her time on the iconic series. Getty's journey into acting took an unconventional turn. She didn't pursue acting seriously until the age of 55, and by the time she joined the Golden Girls, she was 62. Despite her extensive life experience, Getty openly admitted to living with a constant companion, fear. The fear of performing, the fear of not being good enough, and the fear of whether she could consistently deliver week after week plagued her thoughts. In a candid revelation, Getty shared her inner struggles. I'm afraid, you know, I live with fear as a constant companion. Can I do this week after week? Am I good enough? Will I be able to pull it off this week? Will I be able to fool them again? Her reflections on her anxieties were delivered with a touch of humor as she acknowledged the very real and universal experience of imposter syndrome that many people, even seasoned professionals, grapple with. Getty's self-deprecating humor continued as she humorously revealed the weekly ritual of stage fright she experienced. Every Friday, I'm scared out of my wits, you know? I keep thinking, I don't believe that I'm in this. Wait until they find out that I can't do it. Despite her fears, what stands out is the fact that, to the audience, none of this anxiety was visible in her performances. Getty's ability to portray Sophia with wit, humor, and authenticity was a testament to her acting prowess. The irony of her situation wasn't lost on her or her colleagues. Despite Getty's internal struggles, her performances were flawless, and her fears went unnoticed by the viewers. This discrepancy between her internal doubts and the seamless execution of her role highlighted the depth of her talent and professionalism. Arthur and White didn't always share the same perspective. The on-screen chemistry between B. Arthur and Betty White in The Golden Girls is a testament to their acting prowess, but behind the scenes, the two actresses reportedly approached their craft in different ways, creating a dynamic that had its share of nuances. Betty White, known for her light-hearted and affable demeanor, shared in a 2011 interview with Joy Bahar that B. Arthur was not particularly fond of her. White expressed genuine confusion about the source of Arthur's sentiments, stating, I don't know what I ever did, but she was not that thrilled with me. But I loved B. This candid revelation hinted at a disparity in their off-screen relationship which contrasted with the warmth audiences perceived on screen. In 2016, Arthur's son, Matthew Sachs, shed further light on the differences in their approaches to work. According to Sachs, White's more extroverted and friendly style occasionally clashed with his mother's focused and concentrated approach to acting. Sachs explained that during the filming of the sitcom, there were instances when production had to stop. While Arthur preferred to stay concentrated and might even stay backstage, White would go out, smile, chat with the audience, and make friends with them. Sachs described White's interactions with the audience as a genuinely nice gesture, considering that many fans had traveled from all over the country to be a part of the live filming. However, he acknowledged that his mother may not have appreciated this approach emphasizing the importance of maintaining focus and conserving energy during the filming process. Despite these differences, Sachs emphasized that there was no animosity between Arthur and White, either on screen or off. In fact, their friendship extended beyond the set.
Sachs revealed that at one point, Arthur and White lived close enough to each other that they would drive each other to work, showcasing a level of camaraderie that transcended any professional disparities. Estelle Getty was, in fact, one year junior to her television daughter. Estelle Getty's journey to her iconic role as Sophia Petrillo in The Golden Girls is a tale of Hollywood serendipity and the transformation of a seasoned New York stage actress into a beloved TV character. In a 1992 interview with Sandy Newton, Getty revealed the initial confusion surrounding the role, recalling, When I got the script, I assumed it was for the role of Dorothy. Little did she know that her managers had a different plan for her. The part of Dorothy's mother, the sharp-tongued and feisty Sophia Petrillo. At the time, Getty was touring Los Angeles with Harvey Firestein's play Torch Song Trilogy. Her managers saw potential for her in Hollywood and encouraged her to give it a try. The decision proved fortuitous, as just six weeks later, Estelle Getty landed the role that would define her career. Sophia Petrillo in The Golden Girls. Despite her theatrical background, Getty faced the unique challenge of portraying an 85-year-old woman while being only 60 herself. This age transformation showcased her acting prowess as she flawlessly embodied the cantankerous yet endearing Sophia. The chemistry between Getty and B. Arthur, who played her on-screen daughter Dorothy, became one of the show's defining elements. Getty's dedication to the role went beyond her acting skills. According to the New York Times, she clinched the role during the final audition by showing up in the costume and makeup of a little old lady. This commitment to character undoubtedly played a significant role in securing her place in the ensemble cast of The Golden Girls. Throughout her tenure on the show, Estelle Getty's portrayal of Sophia earned her Emmy nominations seven times with a well-deserved win in 1988. Despite the challenges of portraying a character much older than herself, Getty brought depth and authenticity to Sophia, endearing her to audiences around the world. As the series finale approached, Getty reflected on her character in an interview with Sandy Newton. She expressed genuine affection for Sophia, stating, I really like that lady. I play her with all the love I can because I think she's a great character. I think she's a great person. A caring, feisty, daring, optimistic, tough, smart lady. Getty's heartfelt words reflected the connection she felt to Sophia and the impact the character had on both her career and the enduring legacy of the Golden Girls. What do you think about Golden Girls' unrevealed secrets? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.